I'll show you the easiest way to use Git and GitHub for your Unreal Engine 5 projects to set up version control. This is the most straightforward method without any bells and whistles and will take you less than 5 minutes to set up. Despite that, with this method you get all of the main benefits like backing up your projects in the GitHub cloud, discarding changes or rolling back to older commits to revert mistakes, and it enables you to collaborate with others. I won't only show you how to set it up, but we'll also go into how to actually use it while making games and cover some common scenarios you'll have to deal with. First you'll have to install Git, which is the actual version control system, and I have a link to both the Git and GitHub desktop installer in the description. Now the install process is quite self-explanatory and for most people the default settings are fine, so just keep on clicking next until the installation process is over. Then we want to install GitHub Desktop, which is a graphical interface for Git that makes working with it so much easier than typing out console commands which you'd have to memorize. Again, just install it with the default settings. And after Git and GitHub Desktop are installed, it'll ask you to sign into github.com, so either do that or create a new account if you don't already have one. And if you see this let's get started screen, GitHub Desktop is set up correctly. For now we can leave this window be and we first want to create a new Unreal Engine project or prepare an existing one. I'll just create a new project and the Unreal Engine version doesn't really make a difference here. I'll use the third person template as a starting point since it's the best for demonstration. And I want you to pay attention to the project location because we'll need this in a second. Once the project is loaded up we now want to go back to GitHub Desktop and click on create a new repository on your hard drive. And you'll find the button here if it's your first time, but if you already have some repositories set up the UI will be slightly different and you can find it here. Now navigate to the folder where you saved your Unreal Engine project. Very important, we don't want to select the actual project folder, but one layer above it. So in my case the Unreal Engine projects folder and then just remember the exact folder name of the project. Then type in that exact name up here and this part is very important. This basically allows us to create the Git repository directly in the existing project, so we don't have to move folders around after creating it. Then for the Git ignore we want to look for Unreal Engine and this makes sure that temporary files the engine creates, like the saved, built and intermediate folder don't get committed to the files and don't get uploaded to the cloud. These can be potentially tens if not hundreds of gigabytes large, so this setting is very important. Now click on create repository. This will take a few seconds and initialize the repository together with the initial commit. We can check this when clicking on history and here you can see all of the project files that it included. Now this repository only exists locally on this computer, but to push it up to the GitHub cloud we want to click on publish repository. Here it's very important that keep this code private is checked or everybody can just look at and download your project. Then click on publish repository and this will take a few seconds or maybe even minutes to upload the files to GitHub servers. But now we are done setting up the foundation and have our synced repository with the initial commit. And on a side note, if you know about Git large file storage or LFS, you might be wondering why we don't use it. And even though it makes uploads and downloads faster and has many other benefits, you'll have to pay for storage with LFS after crossing 10 gigabytes. And these are not 10 gigabytes per project, but throughout your entire GitHub account. So you'll exceed that limit quite quickly. So LFS is something you might want to look into to optimize how your binary data is handled. And I do cover it in my other video from two years ago, but I recently stopped using it outside of big long-term projects, which made the setup much faster and practically there haven't been any issues. Now that the repository is ready to go, let's talk a moment about commits. Commits are basically like checkpoints in your project that are a snapshot of the changes you've made since the commit before that. I often see people only commit their changes once per day before they shut down the project, but generally you want to create a new commit for every task you complete and for bigger tasks you might want to break it down into even smaller steps. So let's say I make some changes in the third person project I just set up and completed a task, I then want to open up GitHub Desktop and it will show my changes here. You can then uncheck changes you don't want to commit, for example if you just tried something out but want to discard it later, and then write a summary message of what you did. The best practice here is to write a sentence in present tense. So for example, create launcher blueprint instead of created launcher blueprint. And then you can click commit to main, which creates a commit on your local machine. However, this is still not affecting what is stored in the cloud on GitHub. To push your changes to the cloud and back them up to potentially share them with your teammates, you want to click on the push button. Just doing this alone will prevent you from losing your entire project in the case that something happens to your PC and you won't have to manually make copies of your project and upload them to Google Drive or whatever other crazy methods some people are using. Another great benefit of setting up Git with your project is that you can fix mistakes easily. 
One of the biggest problems I see with many beginners is that they're scared of trying things out and making changes to their project. But especially if you're doing something for the first time, you'll often have to try out many different methods to implement something until you find the best solution. As an example, when working on the follower mechanic in my JRPG recently, I had multiple ideas for possible solutions. I first tried an approach inspired by rollback netcode where the player saves all keyboard or gamepad inputs in an array and all followers will then execute the same inputs with a delay to walk the same path. This took roughly 30 minutes to implement and affected many different blueprints, but it just didn't work out in the end and wasn't the solution I was looking for. If I had to now track down all of the changes I made and manually revert everything to get back to the previous state just to try another method, that would have easily cost me another 30 minutes or more. But with Git I can see all of the changes here which I haven't committed yet, and this means I just had to shut down Unreal Engine to not block the files, right click here and discard all changes. And I was back to where I started, saving me a lot of time and also energy. Then I tried another approach, saving the position and rotation of the character and updating the followers to that with a delay, which ended up working much better. So using Git gives you the freedom to not worry about making mistakes and you can try out many different approaches without the fear of having to manually revert everything one by one. And by the way, if you're interested in making a 2.5D JRPG with turn-based combat in Unreal Engine 5, my biggest course yet will launch next month. And by joining the waitlist from the link in the description, you'll get a discount code when it comes out and also instant access to my 2.5D top-down template right now. So make sure to check it out from the link in the description. And to get back to the topic, if you've already committed a mistake, things get much more complicated. If you haven't pushed to origin yet, you can just undo the commit and then again discard the changes, which is the best case scenario. But if you already pushed to the cloud, things do get a lot more complicated. If your commit is the newest one all the way at the top, you can just right click it and revert changes in commit to create a commit that reverts everything you did. And before doing this, you'll want to shut down Unreal Engine to unlock the files. And after that you can push it to the cloud to also revert the changes for everybody else. But if you've made a mistake further down the commit history and only notice it later, things do get even more complicated. If none of the commits after that change the same file, you should be able to revert it without any issues. But if for example multiple commits change the character blueprint and you revert your mistake, it's gonna lead to merge conflicts and you'll have to manually fix your mistake. So be careful with that. I hope you understand now that even when you're working alone, there are many benefits to using version control. But many times you work together with your classmates, friends or colleagues, and this is where version control isn't just helpful, but absolutely necessary. As far as I know, you can't invite collaborators directly from GitHub Desktop, so you'll have to click on the repository tab and view on GitHub. And if you see this 404 screen, it means you're either not logged in or not logged in with the correct account. Once you log in with the correct account, you should see the repository in your browser. Click on Settings and Collaborators. Here under Manage Access, click on Add People. And here you can then find your friends by their username or email address. And to demonstrate, I'll just be adding an account that is set up on my second PC. On a side note, the great thing with just using Git and GitHub is that as opposed to most other platforms, since 2020, there is no limit to how many collaborators you can add to a repository even using the free plan. And that is actually the main reason I now recommend GitHub over GitLab which introduced a five collaborator limit for free accounts in 2022 and stopped being my go-to solution because of that. Okay, now that my other PC has been invited as a collaborator, I just have to accept the invitation in my email and then in GitHub Desktop, click on clone repository and find the correct project in the list. After it's done downloading, I can just right click the current repository, open an explorer and start up the Unreal Engine project without having to go through the Epic Games launcher. And now I have access to the project and repository from a completely different computer, which not only enables collaboration, but can also save you if something happens to your original PC. Great, but when we have multiple people working on a project, something you have to look out for are merge conflicts. This basically means that both users try to update the same file and then commit their changes. To demonstrate that, let's consider a scenario where developer A on the left side has the task to implement a dash mechanic on the player while developer B on the right side has the task to make an interaction system on the player. Now it doesn't really matter who finishes their task first, but one of them is going to lose their progress on the player blueprint. Let's say developer A finishes first, commits and pushes their changes. When developer B finishes their task, let's say 10 minutes later and commits the changes, when they try to push they'll get a message telling them that there are newer commits on the remote and they'll have to fetch first before they can push. 
After doing that, you'll want to shut down Unreal Engine to unlock the files, and you will see both an up and down arrow where it says Pole Origin. When clicking this, it'll lead you to a merge conflict on the BP third person character because multiple users made changes to it. Now, if you get a merge conflict on text files or C code, there are ways to successfully merge and apply the changes of both users automatically, but for binary data like levels and blueprints in the case of Unreal Engine, this is sadly not possible. Instead, we now have to pick which changes get preferential treatment. With the first option, use the modified file from main, meaning that we'll be selfish and prioritize our own changes overriding what developer A did. Or the second option, use the modified file from origin main, meaning we'll sacrifice our own work and keep what developer A did and pushed before us. But honestly, the best choice is to do neither. In a situation like this, I'll usually remember the affected file, in this case the player, just abort the merge and undo my commit. Then I'll go back into Unreal and do my best possible job to find my changes and copy paste them into a notepad file. Then shut down Unreal Engine and discard my changes to the player. Then pull from Origin to bring in developer A's changes. Open up Unreal again and then paste in my changes from the notepad back into the player blueprint. And then I will commit and push again, basically having done a manual merge and now having changes from both developer A and developer B committed to the repository. Okay, but that wasn't a lot of fun, so if we can, we want to prevent merge conflicts in the first place. Sadly, file locking is not a thing with Git as far as I know, but other tools like Perforce, Diversion or Plastic SCM do offer that, however they have other downsides. So what we need to do with Git is to plan out our tasks in a way that there's as few developers as possible using the same blueprints. So you'd have somebody who is responsible for the player, somebody else is responsible for the enemies, somebody for gimmicks and so on. And that's actually a good idea regardless of if you're dealing with version control or not. But for things such as the player, there will still be a lot of overlap and you'll have to communicate with your team. Using actor components to create reusable parts of the player or other blueprints is also a good solution. So instead of creating the interaction system directly on the player, we could create an interaction component, make all the changes there and push them, and then just add the component to the player when we know nobody's using it. Another thing you gotta be careful with are level files. While you're working on something, you'll often test it in a level and maybe move a few things around. Now often you don't really want to save these changes, but on accident will often commit the map. So before committing, make sure to uncheck all level files you don't really want to commit. We don't want to overwrite the changes of somebody putting 4 hours of work into level design with us just moving the player start by a few units. And that's pretty much all you need to know to set up this simple method and use it to reap most of the benefits of Git and GitHub for your project. Now of course this is not the most optimized and proper way of doing version control, but I often found beginners struggle with other more complicated setups, so instead of giving up on it completely, I think it's better to start with this straightforward setup and get used to the process and then look into more advanced and proper ways once the setup becomes insufficient for your project. At that point you could look into Git large file storage, file locking systems, using the blueprint merge tool, hooking up version control with Unreal Engine, the one file per actor setting, and even other completely different version control solutions like maybe Diversion, which I made a video about in the past as well that you can check out here. As always, thanks to my awesome patrons and YouTube channel members.